Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our one true God. Amen. Greetings, everybody. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in on this weekly discourse, ad lib, sermon. Extemporaneous. Yes. And we discuss anything, everything. That's that should be well. Who knows? Saint Hariton. This week, what are we doing this week? Today is Saint Hariton and Saint Baruch, the prophet, who was a disciple of Saint Jeremiah, the prophet. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah wrote his prophecies, but he he spoke his prophecies. But his secretary was Baruch. Mm -hmm. And he wrote a whole book. Prophecy about... Well, it was a book. It wasn't a big book. But it was a prophecy about what's going to happen to Jerusalem and the king. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't favorable because they didn't like what he wrote. So they took it and they burned it in the fire. Bella. So Baruch had to write it all over again. And the grace of God came and he, he wrote it all. And St. Jeremiah added more things. Mm -hmm. And everything that the prophet Jeremiah prophesied came true. Mm -hmm. They could burn all the books they want, but the words live. Yes. Tuesday, Monday, excuse me, Monday, we go from Sunday to Monday, is St. Kiriakos, the anchorite of Palestine. And it so happens it's Columbus Day. Now, who's Columbus? He's, a lot of people want to hate him nowadays because he found the new world uh, he was from the old world Constantinople some people think and the Muslims overran Constantinople in 1453 mm -hmm. so he decided who wants to live with these people it's all they want is Tony it's unspeakable so he decided He's going to go west, young man. So he went west. And that's... He went to the end of being going west, and there was an ocean there. And he must have said, I wonder what's on the other side of this ocean. Because mm -hmm. some people thought, like Roman Catholics, that the world is flat. And if the world is flat... Excuse me. Yeah. None of the church fathers ever believed the earth was flat. Yes, only the heretics. Got that? Okay. No church father ever, ever, even had the thought that the world was flat. But, as the famous saying goes, many of the the most educated, <laughs> many of the most educated people are not intelligent. No. No. 
No. And so they couldn't realize that if the earth is flat, like a table, so you dump an ocean on it, or you dump a lake, or you dump a river, or you dump a stream, or you dump a glass, the water is going to fall off. There's nothing there. There should be no ocean there yeah. if the world is flat. Well, Columbus had the theory that the earth is round. Right. And he was probably reading the Holy Fathers, right? Same the basic. Greek Fathers. Of course. After all, everything else is round. You look up into the sky, the sun is round. The moon is round. Uh, could they see any of the planets at that time in 1492? Could they see? It's just, a, it's just a dot. It's not a line. Yeah. So, anyhow, he discovered America. And he was Greek, by the way. All the logs on the ship were written in Greek. Right? Yeah. And so... Um, some people are raising eyebrows that I mention political things that are happening. So in order to raise those eyebrows a little higher, we'd like to tell everybody in America that's with our church, you better vote for the right person. And if you don't know who to vote for, which I doubt that happens, then call. Call me. And I will rebuke you. Okay. I will tell you how... But I think everybody knows who to vote for because we've been voting this way since the highly educated and unintelligent people have passed a law that says a woman, a woman has a right to kill. That's what it is, another person. Mm. Woman has a right to kill her. Not a man. A woman has a right to kill another person, even though it's her baby. So this is... Uh, um, sacrifice unto Baal. Uh, abortion is legal in the eyes of the so-called intelligent, but it's illegal in the true discernment of God and the church. It's murder. No one has the right. It's from the very beginning. The Ten Commandments, thou shalt not murder. Whew. But there is a group of people who are evil. Now, what can you say? And they call themselves democratic. And they want to destroy the republic. And this is what we have here. We have a republic where we vote for someone to go and represent us because, what, 300 million people? <clears throat> we have to carry on business. So we hope we vote for decent and honorable people. So therefore, uh, everyone should vote for the Republican candidate. So we could, we have a choice, and we pick the better 
of the two. Okay, the epistle today. Brethren, St. Paul to the Corinthians, the one who soweth sparingly, it says, shall also reap sparingly. And the one who soweth with blessing shall also reap with blessing. Let each give even as he purposeth in his heart, not out of sorrow, nor out of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And because that's what God is. He gives and gives and gives. And therefore, he loves it when we give and give and give. Why? Because we're emulating him. Mm the provider. Mm -hmm. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that ye always, having all sufficiency in everything, may abound to every good work, even as it has been written. He disperseth, he giveth to the poor, and his righteousness abideth forever. So, what is he saying? When you give, and give, and give. God is able to make all grace, all power, uh, abound to you, and that you will always, he's saying always, have s sufficiency in everything. Mm -hmm. So don't be don't be sad, which is it's a, it's a demonic thing. When you when you give to the poor, it's not a loss, it's a gain for you. Okay. Now the gospel is Jesus was standing by the lake at Gennesaret. And he saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen disembarked from them and they were washing their nets. And he embarked into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out to the sea a little from the land. And he sat down in the ship, and it must have been a very quiet and peaceful day. Mm -hmm. No wind, no waves on the Lake of Galilee. And was teaching the crowds, not the crowd, the crowds on the shore. And he was on the ship. And uh, you know, you wonder what was he saying? Well, we know it from the Holy Gospels. He wasn't saying anything different than the Holy Evangelists recorded. And to show what he was saying was very, very, very f fruitful, abundant, the beautiful. He told Simon, put out into the deep and let us and let down your nets for a draught. Now Simon answered and said, Master, we toiled throughout the whole night and took nothing. So all night they were throwing the nets out here and bringing them in. What's in the net? Nothing. <laughs> then they throw the net over here and bring it in. And what did they get? Nothing. It's a lot of work. How long did it take him to throw out a net here and there? They didn't have what we have now, sonar, fish sonar detectors. No. no. And so they were tired. They said, this, this, this is the day that... Uh, all the fish decided they're going to go on the other side of the, the lake. There's nothing over here. 
right? Mm -hmm. Or they decided they're going to go to the bottom and take a nap. It's nighttime. Do fish sleep? Yes. They do? Sure. How do they sleep? They just get a little cushion. And they go to the bottom? Yeah. All right, so they were all sleeping. Yeah. It's nighttime. And they looked up and they saw the <laughs> Simon in one ship and Jacobus and John in the other ship. And they said, look at that, throwing nets over. No, I'm going to stay down here and take a rest. Okay, so now the morning came. And Christ said, go out a little and throw the net in. And the, sh the fish, they woke up, right? Maybe they were gathered around the boat listening to the teaching. Also, that's possible. No doubt. But they looked up and they said, okay, look at that wonderful net. Let's all jump into it. Right? And after they let down the net, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net was being broke through because the fish was so much. And they nodded to their partners in the other ship so that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they began to sink. All the fish in the lake wanted, wanted to be in those nets and in those ship to show how wonderful Christ's teaching was. That's how, what can they do? I'm going to say, he taught you people on the shore and to show you how beautiful his teaching is, we're going to jump out and offer ourselves for a, to give you a nice meal. So when Simon saw it, he fell down on his knees of Jesus and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. I'm a sinful man, O oh Lord. For astonishment seized him and all those with him on account of the draught of fish which they took. It never happened in all their life. Never. In like manner, Jacobus and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, and saying to the other two also, Cease being afraid. From henceforth thou shalt be catching men alive. And when they brought down their ships upon the land, they left all and followed him. So he had immediately four disciples. Just like that. The first called was Adam. Uh, first called was uh, Andrew. He had known and told Simon, we have found the Messiah. And so now, Simon, now Christ comes and he tells Simon, Let's, let me talk in your ship. And now make, make a net out there and then catch all these ships. The other two were his relatives were Christ's relatives and <clears throat> partners with Andrew and Peter. So now he had four disciples and they left, it says, they left all and followed him. Mm -hmm. Well, if Christ was here now, oh, what would we do? We would say the same thing, right? I'm going to leave all and I'm going to follow you. But Christ is not here now. We are living in many various parts of the country, if not parts of the world. But we still should follow him. 
and lead a life that is pleasing to him. Lead a life that's pleasing to him and be his disciples. Okay. We're called. We're all called to do that. Uh, when we were baptized, what did we chant? All ye that in Christ have been baptized, Christ have ye put on. Alleluia. Alleluia. So we have to act like Christ would want us to act, like he would act. Uh, now, we're going to talk a little bit from this book of the new martyr, Saint Anthemus. We got an icon of him? Yes, we do. And this is the 54th edition. It's like a little diary, his thoughts. It's not like St. John of Constant who had a whole book. This is just a few. Not very many. Thoughts that this, this new Mara had before the Turks took him and drowned him. Mm. As bodily sickness, it says. This is going to help my eyes if I have a little. <clears throat> As bodily sicknesses are of many kinds and cannot be cured with a single medicine, so neither can a good pastor comfort or correct all the different characters of men with a single kind of teaching. For one kind of teaching is needed for a man and another for a woman. One kind of correction is necessary for an old man and another for youth. One kind of guidance is necessary for the rich and another for the poor. One kind of consolation for a happy man and another for a sorrowful. One kind of healing for a healthy man and another for the sick one. One kind of confrontation is required with a master and another with a servant. One kind of advice for an old man and another for a timid, a bold, a bold, not old, bold, for a bold man and another for a timid one. One kind of pacification is needed for a meek man and another for an angry man. Well, this is one kind of speech for a learned and one kind for the unlearned. And you'll find it all, won't you, in the gospel. Mm. Yes. You'll find all the types of all the types of teaching necessary. And for sure, one thing we are not called to be teachers of others, as it says, right? We're called to be teachers of ourselves. Because so often, you know, you teach someone else and they get offended. Deliverance, this is a miracle from St. John Maximovich. Christ is risen, truly, truly is risen. risen. Dear fathers, with prayers of thanksgiving to the risen Christ, he who works miracles through his saints, I write to you, this account. For several years I have had a skin growth on the side of my neck. It started off as a pinpoint bump and had increased in size and length until it was one-eighth of an inch in diameter and then three-eighths of an inch a year and a half ago, I was forced to remove my cross and, and my neck chain 
because the chain would cut into this growth and make it it make it bleed and cause me much pain. Mm -hmm. I put my cross and my chain away in a dresser drawer. It bothered me not to have Christ's cross around my neck. And at times I thought about how the growth, about having the, the growth surgically removed. But I was confronted with other trials and tribulations and this just seemed a part of it all. Instead, through prayer and fasting, I tried to better my inner self rather than my external self. So, while ordering icon prints from a bookstore in California, and we probably know which one that is, it's in San Francisco, I also saw something about free oil from the sepulchre of Archbishop John Maximovich. So, out of curiosity, I ordered some of this oil. Now, this man lives the other side of the country, in Connecticut. <clears throat> At that time, I had no idea who this man was or what he did or anything about him. My order was delayed for some time, this being the will of God. However, during this time, I started to hear, I started to hear things about this Archbishop John, his pious life, his works, his deeds, his healings, and about this oil and how it should be used. I genuinely feel, felt, a genuine feeling of respect began to grow in my heart for this man. By this time, with all my love, I was asking for the Archbishop's prayers and was always, and was also praying for his blessed repose, because he had just died. In prayer, I told the Archbishop that beginning with the first day of Lent, I would anoint my neck with this oil, and I asked that he beseech the Lord to remove it from me. So, for the few first few days that remain, remained before Lent, I prayed, please remember me, Archbishop John. You know how much I want to wear my cross again. Pray for me, God pleaser, blessed wonder worker. Take away this growth that keeps me from wearing the life-giving cross of our Savior. Mm -hmm. On Monday night, March 13th, 1978, after I had said my evening prayers in my icon corner, I took the oil from the shelf and put some on my finger, and for the first time, I anointed my neck in the area of the growth. I did not feel it. How strange. Oh. I instantly thought that I should, how could I miss missed the spot? But how could I miss it? It seemed it's been with me for so long. I stepped away from the icon corner to a wall mirror to check. But the vigil light was insufficient, so to see to see by, so my heart was, was beating fast. I rushed to the bathroom, put on the light, and checked my neck. The growth was gone. 
There was no blood, no scab, no pain. With tears, I went back to my icon corner and thanked Archbishop John with all my heart. Soon after I had a panaida set for the Blessed John for his repose, for this service, I put my cross back on and for, uh, for the time, I put my cross back on for the first time in well over a year. Now each time I touch this cross, I thank Blessed John and I will pray for his, always for his repose. For your information, I am 33 years old, married, a father of two children. As God is my witness, what I write, what I have written here is the truth. So the God Peter in Malford, uh, Connecticut. Mm. The other side of the country. Now, what do we have here? Philokalia from St. Philotius of Sinai. Uh, the smoke of wood, the smoke of wood fire is painful to the eyes, but later, when light appears, it brings delight in place of discomfort. In the same way, attention, constantly straining the eyes of the mind, is painful and trying to the head. But Jesus being invoked in prayer, when it comes, brings light to the heart. Remembrance of him together with illumination of our inner man brings us the highest blessing of all, that is, the Lord himself. We should all do the Jesus prayer, even if you can't do a lot, do a little. Because it's calling upon the name of Christ. Now, here's St. John of Constant, the entry that he put. And there's no date on this, but the whole book is. Priests, he's addressing all priests of God. Learn how to turn the bed of sorrow of the Christian sufferer into one of joy by consolation of faith. Learn how to make him, instead of, in his opinion, the most unfortunate, the happiest of men. Assure him that having been a little chastened, he shall be greatly rewarded, quote unquote. And you will be the friends of mankind, angels of consolation, instruments or ministers of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. That's nice. Okay. Anything else that I forget? There's been some horrible news, but that's in the Roman Catholic Church. If you want to... Yeah. And, and Pope news is that he supports uh, the communists that's in this election, Joe Biden. He's of one mind with the communist. <clears throat> other news is, any other news? No, we don't know. Getting ready for winter. <laughs> yes, we changed our tires. It's dangerous to drive in snow without snow tires, especially in the mountains. So that's one thing we did today, uh, this week, this past week. And uh, uh, news from 
uh, Bishop Nectari. Um, he's registering the Genuine Orthodox Church of Uganda with the government. And his luggage has not yet appeared. The most important luggage, all the holies uh, were with him. So he has the holy things always with him. He had them always in there with him now. Thank you all for listening to us today. God bless you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I have you know that some of our doctors believe that this virus is a hoax. All of them. All of them believe. It's just a, it's just the flu. And these masks are just a ploy to scare the people and look how many people are scared. Mm. So when I wear my mask, when I go down, if and when I go down, it's not over like this, it's like this. <laughs> So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Amen. Amen.